it's it's a really rewarding role. Um, you see new clients, you know, join the business and they're peeling back the curtain in the early, early stages thinking, are oh, these guys are for real? But um, it's great to be able to to build that rapport with them and, and really add value to their investment journey. Um, so looking at the best options in the market, Tab, for them yeah. and helping them understand that from an investment perspective. You're listening to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. Here's your host, Tabitha Bright. Hello and welcome to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard where I get to speak to property investors from around Australia about their investing journey. My name is Tabitha Bright and I'm Head of Coaching here at Positive Real Estate where we help people build wealth through property. With over 8,000 clients across Australia and New Zealand, there are some incredible stories to tell, which hopefully make your investing journey that little bit easier and will inspire you along the way. So my guest today is Riley McNee, and Riley's one of our internal team. He's what we refer to as a property consultant, and Riley's background has been over 18 years in real estate, and we talk through what makes a quality investment And he details what property purchase he recently made that is looking like delivering 50,000 in cash flow per annum, which is pretty damn amazing. Lastly, make sure that you hang around as Riley shares one of the spookiest stories that he's come across in real estate. So enjoy this conversation with Riley. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's podcast. Today, I have one of our team, uh, the fabulous Riley McNee, and he's here with me, and we're going to talk a whole heap of stuff property, but firstly, um, welcome to the podcast, Riley. Thank you, Tab. Thank you for having me. I've been uh, listening to all your episodes, and I thought, geez, what have I got to do to get a tap on the shoulder here? (laughs) I never know whether it's um, whether people are dreading the tap on the shoulder. So, you know, I do try to give everybody a bit of leeway. You could have tapped me on the shoulder and put your hand up and said, <laughs> "Tab, I'm I, in." <laughs> no, I've just I've just enjoyed listening to them, and you know, they've, oh, they've been great. So, good oh, stuff. You're a good man, and um, we are missing someone tonight, uh, and we're going to do a shout out to her. Uh, Tiffany, Riley's uh, better half, I can say that, can't I, Riles? Uh, and uh, I was looking very forward to interviewing Tiffany tonight, Tiff, but um, yeah, as she said, and Tiff, I'm going to out you because you're not here, you didn't have the eyebrows and your, and your makeup on, so uh, <laughs> eyebrows done and your makeup on, <laughs> so you're off the hook, uh, my friend, but we'll nab you another time, maybe. <laughs> nice, Deb. Um, She'll like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All righty. So tell me, Riley, to explain for anyone that's watching today, what do you do at Positive Real Estate right now? I mean, you're moving into a new role, which is exciting as well. So we can talk a bit about that. But what do yep. you do for Positive Real Estate? So really, my uh, well, my role is as is a property consultant here at Positive Real Estate. And okay. A lot of new clients, you know, they they come into positive real estate and they think, well, here's the guy that's here to sell me an investment property, so to speak. But really, our job is is a lot more detailed than that. We're really we're there to help clients consult them on their property investment journey. So where I come into the piece is obviously the coach looks at things from a holistic approach. They sit down with the clients, look at their goals, what they're trying to achieve. Um, what's their financial capacity like, timeline, you know, you know this better than anyone being the head of coaching, clearly. Um, and, and my role is really to look at the options that we've got available in the marketplace um, and look at what are the best options that are in line with the investment strategy that the coach sets in place. So it's it's a really rewarding role. Um, you see new clients, you know, join the business and they're peeling back the curtain in the early, early stages thinking, oh, these guys are for real. But um, it's great to be able to to build that rapport with them and, and really add value to their investment journey. Um, so looking at the best options in the market, Tab, for them yep. and helping them understand that from an investment perspective. Awesome. So uh, were you answering my question then when I said, so how do you add value? 
Oh, I didn't hear that part. Ah, so how do <laughs> I, I... <laughs> I snuck it in? It was like a cat when you were taking a breath. So how yeah. do because you, you said you that you as the P as we call them PCs, so property consultant adds value. How do you add value? What do you do? Well, you know, property you investing. After I said, I'm no, 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 not at all, not, not at all. Like property investing is very different from going out and buying a home, right? And there's 100%. different properties um, and different strategies in in regards to the real estate mm -hmm. that will help clients achieve their overall goals, right? So that might be in the sense of you know we've we've just saved up a ten percent deposit now and we need to save further savings to, to pay our term duty costs. So that might be a strategy of going into an off the plan property. And when we're talking about investing, there's always trade-offs, there's always mm -hmm. pros and there's always cons to a property and a strategy and a marketplace. Yeah. So it's really just about educating the clients as much as possible so they can make a logical decision moving forward. Yeah, and feel comfortable with that decision. A hundred percent. It's 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 a re removing the fluff. I like to remove as much fluff as possible. Um, and look at the data, look at the market evidence, look at the numbers, and you know ultimately determine is does this property ticks the boxes for our strategy. Perfect. And um, you know, if we were to lift the curtain, so to speak, and and go behind the scenes, um, mm. one of the things, <laughs> one of the things that we do with the team is um. When uh, we meet with uh, Sam Saggers, that all of you guys will probably know, and our acquisitions team, and that go out and find the deals, and we brief the property consultants on the deals that are coming through. And I, I think it would be, um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Riley, a, a big part of the briefing is talking about the upside of the deal. So what's great mm -hmm. about it, why a client would consider it for their portfolio, what strategy it suits, what price point it is, what market, et cetera. And then there's education on that market. But then the flip side of that is the team are also very skilled at talking through um, what we call the trade-offs of any property. Because yeah. you never, ever, ever have something that is only one thing, only good, only a great deal without there being some corresponding trade-offs it's the yin and yang of life i guess you could say um yep. and so what uh riley and the team do is when they meet with the client and they take them through a deal they'll talk through what's great about that deal and why it's good potentially as an option for that client plus mm. any of the challenges that might need to be mitigated um you know is it a bigger development is it in a market where you're getting a discount but that means that the rents might be softer like there'll, there'll always be a trade-off. And I think talking through those trade-offs garners a lot of trust because people feel like they're not being sold just anything and promised some unicorn of a property. Um, yes. Is that your experience? Without a doubt. You know, we, we, yeah. the PCs have a little bit of a joke that a well-informed client is a good client. You know, and this is why we try and get as many of our clients along to mentoring as possible, to tune yep. into as much education as possible. You know, so they feel empowered. They know, you know, okay, I've looked at the data, I've looked at the evidence, I'm comfortable with my decision moving forward because yep. ultimately it is their name that is going on the contract. It is 100%. those the clients purchasing the asset. Yep. And, you know, the asset's going to do the heavy lifting for us over the next 10, 15 years to achieve our goals. So They've got to understand what they're buying and why they're buying. Why are they buying that property? So m most certainly, we um, you know we can be a little bit of a, a spanner in the mix at times to the acquisitions department because they're very diligent in what they present to our clients. Yeah. I was chatting with a client earlier. He said, um, "How many how many properties have you guys got in your books?" And I said, "Well, you know, we've got a." fair bit on the market at the moment in different locations, different states, but to give you some scope, what goes on behind the scenes, in our acquisitions funnel at the moment, we've got over 110 properties. And those properties have got to go through 14 different stages, checks and balances, before a client's actually looking at a property investment report. Mm. So out of that 110 properties, clients may only see, you know, anywhere from five to 15 it's mm. a pretty much a culling process yeah yeah and, you know, so a lot of that due diligence is done up front 
um, for the for our clients here at PRE, and I think that's you know that's there's a lot of value in that that clients don't see. Yeah. Um, but then it's also too, like you said, just walking them through. Look, these are the pros. These are the trade offs you need to be aware of because, yeah. like you said, Tab, if we wanted to buy in the best suburb, the best property in Australia, well, the trade off there is going to be the price tag, right? So. Yeah. There is the always yield. trade offs with really. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the yield, exactly right. So, there it's, yeah. So, I'm going to circle back around to something you said because we haven't clarified it and I think it's really important. You had a <laughs> grin on your face and you said, We're a spanner in the works. Oh, ah, <laughs> so, yes. I want to go back to that. Why are you a spanner in the works? For the clients or for the acquisitions team? For the acquisitions team. Oh. Um, <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, we like to ask a lot of questions um, yep. because we need to be as informed as possible. Yep. Um, we're pretty well detailed for a team. Like we explore, look at all the detail things. Okay. You know, I've been doing this for years now every day. So yep. my eyes might pick up something much quicker than a client would, for instance. So. Mm -hmm. We literally, you know, we see the property and go, that looks great, but we tend to pull it apart and look at the trade-offs before we look at the positives on a, on a piece of real estate. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a bit <laughs> yeah. of our process too of completing some due yeah, diligence right. on the property. I know all the PCs do this as well, that yeah. obviously the acquisitions department complete due diligence on property, but yeah. then we do that as well on deals because – Ultimately, it's me chatting with the client um, yeah, it's your and exactly right. And I need to know what I'm talking about. And, you know, at the end of the day, we all want our clients to get the best possible result. We really do. And it's a responsibility we all take very seriously here at PRE. I know I do. Um, yeah, I love <laughs> it. It's good. Awesome. And um, in your... I'm going to come to you and your history and your background and some of your story in a second. But before we do, so you're moving into a new role shortly, which is a bit exciting. It's very yeah. exciting. Yeah. yeah. You're joining the other side. You're going over to the dark side. I am indeed. So, <laughs> tell us about uh, that. Well, I'll be stepping into the acquisitions department um, huh? pretty much as we speak, as of yeah. this podcast. So, this has happened in the last 24 hours. But, yeah. It's something I'm really excited about. Obviously, I, I get to work closer with Sam and, you know, I've got a bit of a man crush on Sam. So <laughs> <laughs> that suits me. <laughs> <we all. laughs> so, um, but no, it's, you know, property real estate is my passion. Um, it has been my passion now for a long, long time. So it's just looking now on the other side of the fence, you know, yeah. how we look at, um, you know, potential real estate from a short-term to a long-term perspective for our clients, making sure it's safe and secure. Um, and ultimately it's going to get the runs on the board for them. So yeah, yeah. that I am super excited about. I'll, um, I'll miss the PC team and whatnot, but no doubt, you know, my clients will still see me around. I'm not going too far away. Yeah. We won't let you go too far. Um, <laughs> keep pulling your back in and, uh, we'll, uh, Send you around the traps once um, we're all doing face-to-face -face events again so you can see all the clients. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, So you're going to be responsible essentially for um, bringing deals on for clients. Correct. You're out there analysing the market, analysing deals, um, talking to developers, talking to builders, um, mm. and uh, bringing on um, fantastic options for our clients. So, uh, you know, I couldn't think of anyone better to do it. Congratulations. Thank you, Tab. And uh, no, looking forward to it. Really looking oh, forward to it. Yeah. Fantastic. Don't... Fantastic. And so then um, my next question, let's dig a little deep and get personal with Riley. Sure. Uh, you're a good sport. You said uh, gloves were off. I could go uh, I could go right in there, but uh, yep. <laughs> I, I'll be kind. <laughs> However, Shoot from the uh, hip, tell Tab. Us a little... <laughs> I just thought I'd tease you a little bit. Um, tell us a little bit about... Um, about you like what's your real estate journey because to me i'm 53 and i'm looking at you and you look all of 25 so uh <laughs> can i be in, in, <laughs> impertinent yes <laughs> tell, us a little, tell us a little bit about riley you're married you've got how many children 
Uh, yep, so I'm married. We've got three beautiful children, oh. um, two boys and a girl. So very oh. blessed. You mentioned Tiff before. Tiff's my lovely wife. We've been together now. I should know this. Fourteen years. Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, she just watches the first couple of minutes of this. So I'll say, don't worry about the rest. It's not important. <laughs> um, but yeah, three beautiful children. Yeah. Um, and you know, when it comes to real estate, I'm a little bit of a nerd in that regard. Where property is pretty much the only thing I've done. Like. I worked at Domino's for a couple of days when I was a kid, like 14, 15. But um, my father, yeah, my, my dad had a, an agency on the North Shore of Sydney. Um, real estate agency. Real estate agent, yeah. So residential um, in, in, you know, one of your more affluent suburbs in Sydney. And so I was, uh, I graduated from high school i went to university i was doing my degree and then i started to get involved in the business just part-time and you know it started off pretty simple you know letterbox dropping and then it evolved into door knocking and meeting clients and you know taking people's names and numbers and i really liked real estate i liked i liked the personal side of it i liked the relationship side of it um dealing with people um you know going through the highs and the lows and the journeys um that real estate brings um so you know i i completed my uni degree and did not use it once um oh, went, so what have you got a uni degree in so i've got a uh what have i got i've got an honors degree in media communication and marketing is that right you didn't know that did you no do you know what yeah. i've done a paper in i never got any yeah. further than one paper yeah Zoology. <laughs> Zoology. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. I didn't even know there was. Uh, yeah, I've done. I've I didn't even know there was something degree. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I could pitch you like right, these you... weird things you find out about people, right? So you've got a marketing uh, degree. I do. Oh, yeah, well, so... we have to tell Shay that one too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 it might even be cultural studies in there i can't recall now it's been a while um i don't know where it is to be honest but yep i went to macquarie university graduated did my honors um got involved in the business part-time and then that gravitated into full-time and i never looked back you know um dad's old school he's he's not in the business of giving you a leg up and saying here it is on a silver spoon it was <laughs> <laughs> no, mate, you go out and get your own clients, you door knock, um, and you need to learn from your mistakes. So dad was really, really good in that regard. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but I learned a lot of valuable lessons. Okay. Um, and, you know, dad's been in real estate now. Um, he's retired now, um, but probably the best part of 40 odd years. So him and I just talk about real estate all the time, pretty much. Uh -huh. Um, so, <laughs> OTP yeah, so, eye on the wall. Um, and so tell me, how old are you? I am 38. 38? Not 25. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so a decent amount of real estate experience behind you. I do. And, yeah. and um, how long have you been at Positive Real Estate now? I should I've know. Been, yeah, you should know this. Well, I think it's around about five years now with PRE. Yeah. So yeah. it's five. Yeah, so yeah, been a while, decent Positive street. Real Estate. It's um, half it's, a it's it, ha, well. There you go. Jeez, half a decade and um, very different to the residential side of things. And clients often ask me about this. You know, which do you prefer? Easily this, and f for a couple of reasons. Yeah. On a client interaction basis, you know, when you're selling residential real estate, you're dealing with mums and dads. It, They've got a change in lifestyle that they usually sell up and move away and the relationship dissolves where is this you know with helping investors it is a long-term you know property investment is a medium to long-term investment strategy so you're working with you would have worked with clients for over 10 years tab yeah. you know and longer mm -hmm. you you see the it's very rewarding when you see that you've had an input into effectively changing the direction of their lives yeah. through property, yeah. um, which is really cool. I've got some really close relationships with a lot of my clients, 
you know, they'll ask me how my kids are and they know my kids' names. And um, so that was very different. I like that um, long-term journey together. And, you know, if you're getting the results on client with on the board with clients, you become a lot closer, a lot quicker, which cool. is cool. Yep. Um, but I forgot your question now, Tab. <laughs> I was just asking about how long you've been at Positive Real Estate and you were waxing lyrical, but it was I was good. waxing lyrical, yeah, yeah, five odd years, yeah. Yeah. So loving and, it, absolutely and, love it. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. And no, so right. one of the things that um, we encourage at Positive Real Estate is for all our team to eat our own cooking. So yep. <laughs> uh, all of us are much like many of our clients and uh, we've all bought deals through Positive Real Estate. I know Jason and Sam, they're, um, uh, Jason will often talk about how his entire portfolio pretty much is uh, the same deals that our clients do. So um, Riley, you've recently purchased um, an investment property through Positive Real Estate. Tell us a little bit about that and what drove your uh, decision making. And um, and uh, you may have some clients that know that are going to be your neighbour now. <laughs> <laughs> I do actually. One of my uh, lovely clients, he's literally going to be my next door neighbour. Oh, um, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, he's, shout out to Nigel, shout out to Marilyn. They're lovely people. Um, <laughs> but I guess... I'll answer that question in twofold and I and I'll circle back to the the last topic that we're chatting about you know why I enjoy helping investors is also uh, coming from a selfish perspective yeah because I love real estate um being a part of positive real estate and the access to deals that we get um and the opportunity we're able to provide to our clients is literally second to none and I, I, I do believe that. And someone that's been in the industry now for over 18 years, because I did start actually just before we, I graduated from school. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the property deals that we get access to, you won't see them in realestate.com. You won't see them in the back of a Qantas magazine. And you can really capitalize on that. And yeah. I remember when I first joined Positive Real Estate, I'd been in chats with Sam for a while and he was explaining the inside track of how Positive Real Estate assesses markets, looks at opportunities and whatnot. And I thought, geez, these guys spend over 200 grand. They know the best places to invest in. This is like insider trading. I'm in. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's... it's the deals are awesome and you're right. I, I did recently purchase in the Melbourne market. Um, the strategy that I uh, went for and was coached as well, as well um, is the off the plan strategy. And I did that for a couple of reasons. Um, <laughs> right at the moment, I purchased in Melbourne um, and you know, one of the, the one of the early lessons my dad passed on to me, and it was a bit of a corny cliche, but I use it all the time with clients to explain it. It's, you know, when it comes to real estate, son, buy cheap and nasty, you get cheap and nasty results. And so that's always stood the test of time with me. So I always like, yeah, so I, I, I've purchased a beautiful two bedroom um, apartment in a development uh, by Benson's on mm -hmm. Chapel Street in Melbourne, which is, you know, iconic address for the Melbourne market. Yeah, yeah. So, round the corner from me. So you got me as a neighbor round, as well. Round the corner from you, yeah. So <laughs> yep, I'll be coming Fran, over to, yeah, I'll be uh, coming over to have some of that uh, home cooked meals that oh. you do, Tab. If anyone doesn't know, Tab is a bomb cooker. She's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like cooking, but I'll be coming to you because uh, I'm going to hit you up for a stay because you're going to Airbnb that potentially, aren't you? <sighs> I, I, yeah, I looked at it from two reasons. Like the Melbourne market at the moment, the gap between the median house price and the median unit price is the widest it's been in recorded history. Wow. And so I what thought, well, this mean? is. The... What does that mean for people? What that means by, for people is, you know, when we're talking about different property types, more often than not, different property types will move at different times in the marketplace. And usually when a market first takes off, it's usually the housing market that will go first. Mm. And once the housing market sits, starts to hit the affordability ceiling, yep. you know, you see, start to see the townhome space, the apartment space close the gap. Yep. So I'm 
quite analytical and I was looking at the Melbourne market. I could see a couple of things that were were fostering my thought. This is now or never to buy quality dirt yep. in the Melbourne market. The gap oh, between... Oh, yep. Oh, sorry. Were you going to talk about the gap? Yep. Oh, yeah, great. I was. I want You're you right. To close the gap. On close the gap. The gap. <laughs> so the median house price at the moment in Melbourne, you know, over one mil these days. So it's getting yep. very expensive. Depending on who you talk to, it's yep. between yep. nine fifty to one point two. But the gaps here and the median unit price is the gap between the median house price and the median unit price is the widest it's been yep. in recorded history, as I mentioned. So what does that mean? So, what that means is now that you're going to start to see the apartment space start to close the gap. And we're already seeing that at the moment. We're seeing that in rent returns. We're seeing this in yields. We've seen the vacancy rate plummet. Um, I've, I also noticed, obviously, during COVID, Melbourne copped the brunt of COVID for the best part of two years. And what the effect that had on the Melbourne market was, and across Australia, was that people didn't necessarily need to live in the city and they wanted larger living spaces. You could see the number of property searches went from two beds to three beds to four bedrooms, <laughs> yeah. had the lion's share of the searches. Yeah. But from March 2021 to 2022, as Melbourne started to get back into the groove of yep. normality, there was a 150% increase in searches in inner city apartments. Isn't that interesting? Massively. So you've got the largest gap in recorded history. You've got a 150% increase in interest into that property type. That property type, that location, you know, prior to COVID, um, Melbourne was leading the charge in rental and capital growth and coming into that last quarter of 2019. And really what's, what was driving that at the time is Melbourne was our most undersupplied market per capita. Mm. So you've got this perfect recipe of, you know, the apartment space is starting to close. You've got people starting to come back to the CBD um, and you've got limited supply. Mm. So yep. I, I learned in Sydney that mm -hmm. the longer you leave it, harder it is and you'll eventually be priced out of the marketplace we're um, seeing that aren't we really we're seeing it um happen we, really quickly um we, particularly we in brisbane are. as well yeah brisbane you know brisbane melbourne you know inside track guys i think we've probably got sort of 12 to 18 months to get a footprint in those marketplaces and then brisbane slash melbourne become like sydney where investors it just doesn't make sense from a purchase price first rental return perspective yeah. the gaps widened um some crazy um some crazy results in that space like i know that you were looking at uh, a property that some of our clients had purchased in mm. the park yes and they'd purchased for what 600 this is in brisbane by the way yeah. <laughs> uh, townhouses and this is testament to, this is evidence, yep. I should say, of different property types will move at different times, right? Yeah. Because it's all been, Brisbane's housing market has been in the spotlight. Yeah. And the townhome space over the last, probably, probably in the last six months has really picked up in momentum in terms of yeah. capital growth yeah. and values of real estate changing. Good Prior good. to that, it was all the housing market. Mm. And now the apartment space has started to close the gap. And... The, the townhome development you were talking about is in Everton Park. You know, we had clients that went in there in 2019, paid 627 to 630K for three slash four bedrooms. Um, one of my clients at the moment is refinancing that investment property um, and the valuation from the bank has come back just shy of a million dollars, 985 grand. Oh so, my goodness. So a 300 K yeah. uplift in three years. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at, Not bad all. Bad at all. And, yeah. and a 5.3% return as well. Rent to return yield. Right. So right. phenomenal. And it's a yeah. gorgeous development. Um, mm. it, it actually took out 
uh, the UDIA 2019 Best Town Home Development Australia in Australia. Yeah. And for, for you guys that may not be aware, for us property nerds and developers <laughs> out there, UDIA is the award they all want to win. Yes. Um, yeah. So quality piece of real estate. Um, yeah, it's a good one. Awesome. Awesome. Mm. And so the property that you're purchasing, because um, uh, sometimes people get a bit nervous about off the plan as, a, mm. as an option. Sometimes there's a concern that um, uh, groups uh, like us, we like to separate ourselves from most of the groups out there, but groups that yep. do um, education and um, property uh, sell a lot of off the plan and, and it can be the case, um, but it's not always the case. And, and off the plan doesn't mean that it's a bad decision off the plan is an incredibly useful strategy. And we've seen clients mm. get some amazing results with off the plan purchases. Mm. Um, however, there's some rules around that to do it successfully, uh, and not to get caught in a building that's, you know, 30 stories high with 500 units and, um, you know, little boxes that have no soundproofing and, you know, and you can't rent. Like, you know, that is not something that you'd ever buy as an off the plan, although people do get themselves in a pickle in that space. When mm. we're talking off the plan, we're talking, you know, um, often low rise developments, um, good quality, fantastic floor plans. Um, as much space as possible, uh, parking where possible, um, preferably not stackers. Sometimes stackers are an option. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. there can be a whole raft of rules um, around successful off the plan purchasing that means that you get a, a great result and you do get that uplift that mm. you know, sometimes people have a perceived idea that you don't. And so the one that you have bought um, in Paran is certainly poised um, for some decent growth in that space um it's a great floor plan you and i went through it and had a Indeed. had a good look at it it's yeah. a bit of it at working at positive as you can um tap everyone on the shoulder and get their opinion <laughs> <laughs> lots of experts i tell you everyone's got an opinion <laughs> um but it's an awesome one hun and i know um i know you'll do really well out of that so tell I'm me really. um are you going to airbnb it because that was an option wasn't it it was it, it was and yeah. so I'll, I'll answer that question in twofold and I Please. didn't really close the loop there. So oh, sorry. sorry about that. <laughs> um, we, we started freestyling a little I bit, know, but I know. Yep. two things reason, reason why I bought that property and that ties into what you just said. The first yep. prop, the first, the first appeal to that property was the power in buying that property off the plan where people can fall into danger buying an off the plan property is like you said, they're just, multiple buildings, you know, 40 stories, cookie cutter, rinse and repeat. And these, you know, where you've got too many investors in there and not enough owner occupiers. Yeah. And you're, you're not wrong. We've had some phenomenal results recently where clients have, you know, bought for X and have made Y a completion of buying off the plan. And the trick to that is buying in a good location buying in a quality development mm. where a for, fair portion of the units, properties, whatever you want to call it, in that development are catered towards the owner-occupied market. Yeah. So in the development I've purchased in, there's only a block of 60 and mm. I've got neighbours in that development that are spending $1.7 to $7.8 million on, property, on their units, yes. on their units, right? Yeah. And I know that those more expensive units, majority of those are not going to be sold off the plan. Yeah. The owner occupiers are, going, you know, they're not going to look at a floor plan and go, you know what, this is us yeah. and the kids yeah. three years from now. They will be sold at completion to either the downsizer market, the owner occupier market, basically the emotional buyer. Yeah, you tell <laughs> the downsizer exactly right. market. <laughs> Exactly People right. My age, yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that's how real estate works, right? Yeah. What sells nearby to me directly impacts the value of my property. Absolutely. So I might have a three bedroom home, and there's a five bedroom home across the road, but the sale of that property directly impacts the value of my real estate. Yeah. So I've thought, well, you know, a small portion of this development will be sold to the likes of investors like myself, but come completion, a lot of those will be sold. Once they're completed, 
to the either downsizer or emotional buyer where they will tend to pay overs and yeah. good real estate like that. It's now becoming a rarity in the marketplace with supply levels where they're at. Um, and I have, I think I've taken some good lessons from COVID as well, where, where we see the best results in real estate in forms of investing is when that property has got versatility. Mm. And what I mean by is in versatility in terms of either the category of buyer that property might attract now or into the future, because different categories come with different budgets, i.e. downsizers, young couples, et cetera, et cetera. But I looked at it from a perspective of cash flow. I looked at it, well, this property today um, would be returning circa $50,000 on an 80% occupancy rate and Chapel Street, prime location, you shouldn't have an issue there if you're priced um, competitively. But I'm hedging my bets that that $50,000 will turn into $100,000 over you know the next 10 years in cash flow. So I, I think I've is got the best the of both. Airbnb? Yes, so that is yeah. in the Airbnb. So I, I, it's not something I want to do myself. Um, I haven't got the time to do, you know, bookings manage. and yeah. manage it. I've got no interest in that. Um, but yeah. we've partnered up um, with a couple of great groups out there that have got a proven track record of yeah. pretty much looking after it seamlessly. And they get their clip and as they should. Um, but the cash flow on that property is pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> and I've got the, yeah, it's it, what's rare that you get, you know, cash flow and growth walking hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, quite a unique opportunity and I'm very excited. <laughs> I, am. I can I'm tell. Like, I can tell you've done your research on it too. I and, have. And so I'm going to change gears a little bit. I'm going to ask you two questions. What's the craziest thing that you've ever seen in your real estate career? Either a story that's happened to you or has happened at your office or has happened to a client of yours. What's like one of the craziest things you would have seen? And it doesn't have to be PC. I'm sure everyone enjoys a little bit of something that's a bit sideways. <laughs> you know, when you... When you, you see a lot of funny stuff He's over the years. uncomfortable, isn't he? No, 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 not at all. I'm just sort of scanning my brain, which would be the, yeah. the funniest I'll put you on the story. spot. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like you see a lot of, you see the good and the bad sides from people sometimes when you're walking into their homes. You might see, you know, in residential real estate I'm talking about. So I've seen some bloody good fights and domestic blues. Um, oh. I, I've seen... Two guys get in a punch on at an auction. Um, Tell me about that. Yeah, so uh, it was, um, would have been probably around about the GFC time, oh. um, right after the GFC. And during that period of time, it was really interesting. We, I remember selling real estate and we would literally get buses in suburbia that would pull up with, 30 to 40 foreign investors just going around, just buying up everything they could in Sydney. And um, we had an auction that they attended and it, they were Chinese buyers. Um, and there was a bit of toing and froing and one actually spat at the other um, and one picked up a chair. From and the same bus? Stra- yep, from the same bus. So you can imagine that bus ride back to the airport. Um, but yeah, they were into it. Yeah, well, that was that it's was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, it was um, it was definitely an eye opener. So one 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 of the um, uh, bidders spat at one of the others, and the other one picked up a chair and threw it at him. And then there was a bit of argy bargy that went on. Um, it's nuts. It really I, is like- yeah. Yeah, real estate pressure, money, expectations. Right. They can it can be a, a heady mix, can't it? Anything else? Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've caught people in uncompromising positions. <laughs> um <laughs> it seems to be it's <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be a pretty common story for people. Yeah, I think Sharon, Sharon, uh, one of my earlier podcast episodes, she had tenants 
of hers that she had to go around and ask them not to have such noisy um, relations <laughs> because the people next door were complaining. <laughs> so, you know, it just seems that we're all human, right? We're all, yeah. uh, we're all physical beings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so obviously these things happen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I, I, I've got one story actually, oh, yeah, and this please. is this is a little bit freaky. So I remember, freaky. yeah, th this one was really weird, and I never got my head around it. So we we had this listing, and the property hadn't been just like the first time it had been sold in sixty odd years. And the first time I went to the property, it was gated. You walk in the front gate, and it literally had grass like knee high, like hip height. Just it hadn't been mowed in a long time. Huh. And the place was just derelict. There was crap everywhere. And all this grass was cut out. Uh, all the, it was real high grass. And then there was just a boxing bag in the middle of the grass where obviously the, the owner had been boxing, but that was it. Anyway, we walked boxing into the property. The, the... Yeah, just doing yeah. a bit of training. But it's really bizarre. Anyway, so you, that was your first impression. Mm. And then you walked into the home and there was literally nothing in the home but a massage chair, one massage chair. And I thought, oh, okay, maybe he's just cleared out some stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I was walking down, uh, walking through the property and I started to go down to the stairs, had like a, uh, I guess you call it a basement area. Yeah. And because it's, you know, the, the property would have been circa 1900, 1910, it had a sandstone base. But as you were walking down the stairs, it actually had a new cage and gate put in it. And I don't know what was taking place in this property, but it was like there was a hidden dungeon underneath. And it was really bizarre. Um, you know, for a property. Video? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I was with my dad at the time and I said, Dad, this is really weird. Like how are we going to sell this as teenage retreat <laughs> but no <laughs> i shouldn't joke around like but gang it, it made you feel it, it made you feel really really eerie really weird and i would have been only probably you know 18 19 18, at the time i was yeah. young but that always stood out to me because i didn't know what took place in that property Whoa. Um, yeah and the and the i can still picture it to this day the security door was new it was thick steel and it, it literally was a dungeon it was literally a dungeon and you walked down and then he had two or three other cages in the property um dad ended up calling the local police to come through the property as well just to make sure oh, everything was yeah he did because it it was just too weird to it was too bizarre. To it was too out of place. There were no bodies yeah. in the sand. Oh, well, this is it. Yeah, exactly right. Um, but it was all kosher. And that property ended up selling to a developer. It was a corner position. And the developer bought the one next to it and turned it into townhomes. But wow, that was, that was weird. That I is forgot weird. completely about that until you oh, asked me. That's a good story. Mm. It's up there with the headless chickens that Abe was telling <laughs> me about. <laughs> Hanging uh, on a washing line. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to Abe today. Good guy. Oh, yep. big hi to Abe if, yep. uh, if you managed to watch this. Um, all right. And so then uh, back to the classic podcast question to wrap up. Uh, if you could meet younger Riley... Um, and get in front of Riley and uh, give him some sound advice. What would you say to young Riley today? Track your spend, Riley. eighteen year old Riley. Um, track your spending habits. Yep. Um, get involved in real estate as early as possible in terms of okay. investing, and don't be scared. Don't be scared. Get as much education. Look, at the end of the day, fear comes from not you know, having uh, yeah, the information understanding. behind you yeah, and understanding exactly right. Um, and, you know, it's really interesting. Dad had been in real estate for 40 odd years, but yeah. uh, his version of the world was by the crappiest house with the biggest block of land. You know, that's that was his form of investing. And you're never going to build, be a successful property investor util going to, ut utilizing that strategy. Mm. So I think the, the best advice I would give myself is definitely reach out to those that are in the know, that those have got the experience behind them. Mm. Um, leverage off the back of that, track your spending habits, 
and get into it and never look back. That would be my, my um, advice to my younger self. Um, maybe wait a couple more years to have some extra, some of the kids as well. Maybe I should have. <laughs> you had better hope Tiff is not watching this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade them for the world. In the backyard. <laughs> uh, they're my greatest assets without a doubt and I, that might sound corny but it's true i love them to death you know no, that. i know you love your kids you're very much the family man mm. but um yeah i think that would probably be my advice to my youngest self is just it's not all smoke and mirrors out there like if you if you do arm yourself with the, the right information you can do it you can achieve it um yeah so i think that'd probably be the advice i'd give myself tab Awesome, awesome, sage advice. <laughs> All right, well, a massive thank you to Riley uh, for agreeing to be on the podcast today. Um, they were a good sport at short notice too, uh, but I really wanted to pick your brains and give clients a bit of an inside uh, nod to you know what goes on and what, uh, what your role is and where, you, where you're headed next. So I um, hope that was great. Awesome, thanks, Riles. Thanks for having night. me, Tab. Hey, thanks for listening to Property Investor Tales. Remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops. As you can guess, I love hearing people's property investor tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with me via email at propertyinvestortales at positivementor.com.au. We would also love your feedback and I would appreciate a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember, you can watch all of these podcasts over on YouTube at Positive Mentor or at positivementor.com.au. Until then, take care, happy investing, and bye for now.